This tool is uh, what we call the USB RX suite. It is attached uh, right now to a USB RX, and um, it comes up in this default, uh, you know, mixed signal oscilloscope mode. It's got uh, all the channels, the digital channels, uh, the two analog channels as well. And we are going to load a file that is our very first trace. So what we did is we configured all of the channels. And I'll let your screens refresh. We configured the channels for this particular bus. As you see, we have uh, a chip select clock and two data lines uh, that's coming from the accelerometer. If we zoom in on one of these uh, transactions, um, you can see that it's reading three blocks of something. Uh, we're, we are very time constrained, and I don't like counting toggles. So we are going to add something that was going to help us figure out what the data actually means. We're going to add a line to this screen, which is an FPI decoder that we can specify uh, the parameters of. Once we specify that and we apply that data, you can see it goes through and decodes the traffic on that SPI line. Right now we're displaying in hex mode, so you see that it's it's doing a, uh, it's addressing register E8 and then EA and then EC. Now me knowing the data sheet, I know that those are the X, Y, and Z coordinates uh, of the accelerometer. And the values that follow on the orange line are the actual accelerometer measurements. Now uh, this is great in that we can see um, the hex data. Uh, but, but this particular time versus uh, waveform mode uh, makes it kind of difficult to actually see the content of the packet. So we have down here on the bottom a window called the packet presenter window that when we enable it and lift it up, it shows you the actual uh, hex data in more of a packet format. Now this can be a little more useful. Uh, this is time synchronized, so if I click on one of these packets down in this window, it jumps and puts the cursor in the window on the waveform. But that's still making me count bits. I need to know what uh, address E8 is. I need to know what address the EC is. And if I'm doing this all day long, I, I don't want to have to count these bits. So we invented uh, a thing called the packet presenter, which we have a patent on, and that enables you to um, load a file that defines this protocol and sends out the data in more of a human readable form. Effecti effectively, it counts the bits for you. This, uh, this file, actually I'll open one of these, is a simple text file format. This is an example packet presenter file. It defines the name of the protocol that we're going to decode, uh, what a packet means, and, and that means how does it start and how does it end. In this case, it, a packet starts when the slave select goes low, or the chip select in this case, and it stops when it goes high. Uh, the second, uh, the next section called the field defines all of the commands that we want to break down into this, uh, into this screen. And I won't go into the details here. But this is the extent of the file. And it defines all of the commands that the accelerometer understands and, and can, can use. So once we use this file and we save that off, the packets turn from plain hex data into understandable data. In this case, this is the x-axis, negative 1 count, y-axis, negative 1 count, z-axis, negative 1 count. And you can go through now and analyze this data uh, rather than counting bits and seeing, you know, was that a big hit or not. In this case, these counts are extremely small. If we zoom out and we go to where this break is in the data and we see, we put the cursor there, we see on the packet display down here um, some pretty big values. 25, minus 38, 53, and these are um, basically absolute uh, linear measurements of the g-force. 
So the negative means it's going in the other direction, for example. Uh, what we see here is that this particular uh, sample that I have highlighted right here is um, giving us a hit that is definitely big. It's a, it's a big, strong hit, and it should send uh, traffic across the link. And as we see, there is a gap. It's causing some sort of a hiccup. Uh, but it's not because the accelerometer data is bad. The accelerometer data actually is being read correctly, and it should make that hit. So for our first conclusion, uh, for this hypothesis, is that no, the accelerometer, accelerometer is not the problem. 